The official portrait of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was unveiled in Statuary Hall in the U.S. Capitol last night. It will stand next to the collection of portraits in the Speaker's lobby. Former Republican Speaker John Boehner became emotional while speaking at the reveal. Let's take a listen to that. Now, Madam Speaker, I have to say, my girls told me, tell the Speaker how much we admire her. Senate Majority Leader also expressed his thoughts on Pelosi's career and legacy. 20 years, she kept saying the same thing. Our unity is our strength. She kept saying it and saying it and saying it, and the results speak for themselves. We cannot talk about the Affordable Care Act without mentioning Nancy Pelosi. We cannot talk about the American Rescue Plan without mentioning Nancy Pelosi. We cannot talk about the Infrastructure Law, the Violence Against Women Act, the Lilly Ledbetter Act, repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and so much more without mentioning Nancy D'Alessandro Pelosi. She did it all. What do you make of uh, John Boehner getting choked up there? Do you expect that kind of display of emotion from someone who's kind of cast themselves as a political antagonist? I think we do expect that from John Boehner specifically, because isn't he known for his um, emotional, his, he, he's a man who's willing to cry. Right? Over Nancy Pelosi? No, just in general. Wasn't there, isn't John Boehner's tears the whole thing? Oh dear, I might have missed that meme. Uh, but look, it I, is a thing, yeah, yeah. He, cry, he cries all the time. All the, yes, here's a roll call article all the times John Boehner cried. Okay. <laughs> Why? Oh, here's a political article from 2013. Why does John Boehner cry so much? Okay, look, I'm not trying to do a toxic masculinity yeah. here. And yeah, how dare you man. shame a man who, who is not afraid to be vulnerable in front of you, Brianna? Look, my issue is not with the fact that he's crying. My issue oftentimes in these situations. You know, bipartisanship is... We have the tissues here, <laughs> just in case. Well, they're, they're, just they're, in case. justified your direction, Robbie, because, again, this is a safe space for men to cry. <laughs> but, look, my, my concern is always, like, I'm always uncomfortable with the closeness that people demonstrate mm -hmm. in some of these situations because I don't know if this is fair, and it's not that I'm against bipartisanship, obviously, but sometimes the stakes of the things that we're fighting for are extremely high. And the camaraderie between people... I think is only the kind of camaraderie that could exist if the stakes are not personal for you. And I've observed this. I've, I, I spoke to someone who was not a lawyer who was in the middle of a, of a case. And they w watched how the, their counsel and opposing counsel chit-chatted and got together and were talking about how they went to law school together and all this stuff. And she was like, well, we're litigating a very serious issue for me. We're litigating something that's deeply personal. And this camaraderie feels like, how can you possibly bring the fight that I want you to bring an advocacy mm -hmm. for me if there is this chumminess. And some people felt that way about um, Scalia and RBG. And it does, it gives me kind of, there's a big club and you're not in it, George Carlin vibes. Yeah, I am pulled in multiple directions on this because I like the idea uh, on some level of people being able to get along even if they have political differences yeah, I mean, and like, Look at us. Oh, oh. <laughs> we really do. We did the, the, the tissues ready. No, we, yeah, we headlined an event the other day. We did. Uh, it was, uh, it was fun. Um, so I, you know, when, when, like, oh, Ellen DeGeneres and George Bush, like that, you know, people yelled about that because, yeah, George Bush did a lot of things that are very bad, and that's putting it mildly. But I, I am drawn to the idea of people like that getting along and being able to be friends, even if they disagree. But on the other side of that, exactly what you said is true. Yes, th then it shows that there aren't actually these vast differences between our powerful elites who run our government and have nominal R or D next to their name, but, and, and have, you know, will, will, R, will scream at each other while the cameras are rolling and get their little sound bite in and then go have dinner together and go get drinks together and, and yeah. you know, appear at each other's children's weddings right. and various things. Exactly. And there's not, or, you know, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump at Donald Trump's wedding. I mean, I yeah. think there's a difference between Bernie Sanders hooking up with Josh Howley and doing whatever they're going to do together substantively. But you don't see Bernie Sanders and Josh Howley on the golf course, you mm -hmm. know, eating shrimp cocktails together at some restaurant, some steakhouse in D.C. That, that, and there's a yeah. difference there. And I think that sometimes the appearance of conviviality is privileged over people actually coming together over the issues that, that should really matter. Yeah. But maybe we should talk about the, the portrait itself. Uh, what, what do you make of it? It seems like a Pelosi from an earlier era with a shorter haircut at an, at an, at an earlier time. 
How does it stack up against some of the other famous looks uh, fine to me? Portraits, I, presidential I, portraits. The, well, the the I did not like the Obama portrait. So the Michelle Obama one yeah. in particular was not great, right? I mean, that, it was a little can stiff. We say that? It was, it was I think favorite. that at this point <laughs> we're allowed to say it. I did feel like that. it was a little stiff. The grayscale that they put her in, I don't think was especially yeah. uh, flattering. No, this was a good, this was a good picture. Yeah, I'm just I did pull up the list of other times John Boehner has right, cried. This is me. pretty hilarious. Boehner has gotten misty eyed during a tribute to golf legend Arnold Palmer, while listening to Irish music on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, the Ar Arnold Palmer of drink fame, of yes, cocktail fame. He's also a famous uh, golfer. golfer. No, I get it. Gol golf is like the one sport I have any sort of knowledge about. I do watch golf. And now you know why we haven't been covering the World Cup. <laughs> And while singing America the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then he also cried when he replaced Nancy Pelosi as speaker in 2010. And, uh, and uh, yeah, he, he said uh, he blubbered incoherently for, for a long time. Uh, Justin Amash, um, who uh, was a, we've talked about on the show, is a former libertarian um, member of Congress, was a Republican prior to being that, left the Republican Party over frustration with everything. Um, voted against John Boehner for speaker mm. because he thought he was a big spending kind of sellout Republican or something mm. and said John Boehner was by far the best speaker he ever worked with. He really liked the guy, mm. could not stand, said, thought Paul Ryan was insincere in his, while, while sounding committed to Amash's principles was totally insincere mm -hmm. and, uh, and double dealing. And, so well, look, there's something to be, you can be seems, effective by being seems affable. like a nice guy. I, being no... affable is not, it, it can be, you know, of its own yeah. thing, a good, like I, Ted Cruz, nobody likes him. Right. Like, I think what Lindsey Graham said, he could be murdered on the Senate floor and no one would, no jury would convict. Would convict. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I will say a criticism of Bernie is that, you know, there's that famous New York Times interview where he says, I'm not going to call you on your birthday. I, there's a, there's a, there's some moments yeah. where I think that he might have gotten a little farther, not by greasing palms like what everyone yeah. else does, but just shaking some hands. And, and Bernie always seems, I mean, I don't know him nearly as well as you do, so you can tell me <laughs> if my impression is wrong. Uh, he seems very serious. He seems very, like he doesn't, he doesn't take a break from the, from the, I think he's sincerely the really against the millionaires and, and the focused on the things that he's focused yeah. on. I'm not people, saying that's a bad thing. People say that the only difference between offstage Bernie and onstage Bernie is uh, the use of colorful language, and that's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> the topics don't change, just the little, the flair changes a little. Interesting. <laughs> All right, well, we made it through this segment without any tears on either of our parts, so we should wrap before, uh, before this gets out of hand. Indeed. More rising right after this.